大家好，咁之 Good morning. I will now introduce the panelists. We have Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, Mr. Edward Yao. Permanent Secretary of、um, Commerce and Economic Development, Mr. Clement Leung, and Mr. Lam Tai Fai, Chairman of the Board of Advisors. We will now first hear from Edward,、uh, the Secretary, Mr. Edward Yao, before we take questions. Happy New Year! We, I wish you a prosperous New Year. I would like to mainly talk to you about the review report of.、Um, The、uh, dedicated group to review the governance and management of the RTHK. The dedicated group was formed last year to review the governance and management of the RTHK to see how it can better perform its function. The, re the review has been conducted. The review report has been submitted to the bureau. I myself and the permanent secretary will give you details of the report. I will also defer to Mr. Lam Tai Fai to、uh, give you his views on their work. Before I delve into the report, I'd like to first talk about the positioning as well as the role of the RTHK, which serves as a basis for discussion. There are two roles of. The RTHK. One is a government department. The other one is the one and only public service broadcaster in Hong Kong, which is unique. That was a chartered、uh, formula、uh, promulgated in August 2010. The role of the RTHK is set out very clearly. The public attach it. The public attach a lot of importance、uh, to the、um, to the role of the RTHK, and they do understand it. The work of the RTHK in recent years has drawn a lot of attention. Complaints, which stems,、uh, which gives rise to、uh, discussions about the positioning and role of the RTHK, has become more polarized. Some people think that the RTHK is a government department. As a result, they will have to toe the government line, and they cannot criticize the government. On the other hand, there are views saying that as a public bro service broadcaster, they should enjoy editorial autonomy. It is natural that that they, some, from time to time, will criticize the government. However, but I think that if you just look at、uh, the role of RTHK on its single, on one of its roles only, will be in incomprehensive. We think. That we will have to consider whether the RTHK can comprehensively fulfil its duties and roles before you can pass any judgment or make any assessment of its performance. In handling matters relating to the RTHK, the government has been abiding by the principles and standards set out in this charter. The charter sets out that the RTHK enjoys editorial autonomy or editorial independence. However, there are obligations. The RTHK is a public service broadcaster. It has public purposes. It cannot make use of、uh, editorial independence to, de to deviate from the requirements as a public service broadcaster. In the fourth paragraph of the charter, it sets out that as the public service broadcaster, there are certain public purposes that the RTHK has to fulfil. First, sustaining citizenship and civil society. It involves providing、um, balance view to enhance citizens' understanding of the country. And it also promotes the understanding of the concept of one country, two systems, and to produce a programs that contribute to the understanding of、uh, community and nation, and to engender a sense of citizenship and national identity. And it also sets out that the, the RTHK will have to be accurate and authoritative in the information that it disseminates. And it should be impartial in the views it reflects, and even-handed with all those who seek to express their views, be immune from commercial, political, and/or other influences, and to uphold the highest professional standards of journalism. 
These are the principles involved under editorial independence. These are not add-ons. They have always been there in the Charter. They have always been clearly stated in the Charter. The crux of the problem is that is whether these important principles have been fully carried out and reflected in all programs of the RTHK. This is also the focus of the review. As a government department, the RTHK will have to abide by all rules and regulations applicable to de a government departments, say, for example, in terms of budgeting, procurement, manpower, management and resources, as well as uh, different regulations and rules. In the course of our review, we have also taken into account audit report number 71 of uh, 2018. All the roles set out in the Charter will have to be fulfilled properly by the RTHK in order to win the confidence of the public and to meet their expectations. The, the work of the RTHK is not unfettered. Under the Charter, it sets out that um, it sets out the relationship of the Board of Advisors and the RTHK, as well as the role of uh, the Communication Authority. The three parties all have a role to play. In, charter, in the Charter, paragraph number 13, it says that in relation to matters relating to programming standards, quality, editorial principles, the Board of Advisors will advise the director. And all the, co codes of, all the codes of conduct will have to be properly observed. Public complaints will have to be properly handled and investigated. And uh, they will also look at whether the RTHK has, has been abiding by all the different regulations. In relation to complaints, well, there are a lot of uh, contentious uh, programs. Questions have been asked about the roles and the quality of the programs. Altogether, the CA has uh, dealt with uh, seven of the, these complaints. They are all uh, substantiated. There are three serious warnings, uh, two, um, w two warnings and uh, two strong advice. The RTHK has been found to have uh, breached a number of codes and rules. This has attracted public attention. It has also cast doubt on its stance in relation to the editorial um, policy and whether it's subject to proper monitoring. The public thinks that it has to be seriously dealt with. In view of this, we think that there is a need to investigate into the um, management and governance of the RTHK. The dedicated group has on six areas a look at the different areas of the RTHK. First, editorial management, um, performance management and evaluation, management of RTHK's workforce, financial management, stores and procurement, and lastly, information technology management. These six areas cover important matters that have uh, that are close to the heart of uh, the public say for example editorial management it involves how the rthk can um, fulfill the uh, all the requirements under the charter and how it can un it can under the editorial in independence fulfill this public purpose and missions and to uh, about, abide by the highest level of professionalism. Apart from editorial management, um, there are matters that have been looked into, say, for example, manpower resources as well as resources. To a certain extent, it has uh, also touched on the uh, governance of the RTHK as a, as a government department. This was an opportunity to uh, conduct a comprehensive review of the RTHK and for the group to come up with recommendations for them to be implemented. I noticed that the report pointed out that in relation to editorial management, there is a deficiency in well-defined and properly documented guidelines to ensure that the RTHK will abide by the ch charter. The report also points out that there is a heavy reliance on production units. 
or offices. And more often than not, the editor-in-chief and senior management have been put in a passive position, and they have not formulated an active uh, co collaboration with the Board of Advisors for the letter to give advice on um, editorial principles, programming standards, and uh, quality. Also, in terms of um, handling of complaints, there is a lack of transparency. It can ensure that the complaints are dealt with uh, in an objective and impartial manner. And also, in terms of manpower management, uh, the RTHK has a wide variety of staff, other than the program officers, um, the number standing at about 700, and there are 2,200 or so um, NCSC staff and contract staff. In our review, there is a lack of a holistic a management uh, system to ensure the quality and the standards, and to ensure that all staff, whether it be full-time or NCSC staff, will uh, have full understanding of um, the, the Charter and also fulfil the requirements under the Charter. Later on, uh, the Permanent Secretary will be briefing you on the details of the report. In terms of uh, management and governance, uh, there are indeed problems. We have to, to deal with this um, in, in terms of um, the, the um, management and the governance. We need to uh, set up a transparent and robust um, editorial um, mechanism to delineate um, the responsibilities at the different levels. And the roles of the editor-in-chief and the manage management uh, should be clearly defined, in particular in relation to the contentious and sensitive issues. We have to make sure that um, the charter requirements and the professional standards will be uh, measured up to. RTHK should also step up training uh, for the internal staff as well as um, the contract staff to make sure that um, the programming staff of um, RTHK as a public uh, broadcaster and will fulfill the public mission and responsibilities. The Bureau has submitted the report to the management of RTHK for follow-up, and RTHK uh, should uh, set up an um, action plan and timetable and also priority areas for action to implement the recommendations of the report. RTHK um, will consult um, the associations and the stakeholders. The CEDB will monitor the progress of um, the reform. This morning, I've explained um, the details of the report to the Board of Advisors, which will look into the details with a view to fulfilling its role um, as espoused under the uh, Charter. Mr. Lam Tai will be uh, commenting on this later on. RTHK, as a public broadcaster and also part of the government, f uh, has um, a role uh, to play in serving the members of the public. RTHK uh, has to cater to the minority um, viewership. It would produce um, programming uh, which is in public interest and would provide a platform for the public and also provide um, a space uh, which is not influenced uh, by any commercial elements. As long as RTHK can fulfill the charter uh, requirements and fulfill the pu public broadcaster role, it does have a role to uh, exist and has a function to fulfill. I'm sure RTHK will look at uh, all the recommendations and implement the uh, details with a view to providing quality public broadcasting services and also secure the public confidence in RTHK. And I'll hand you over to the Permanent Secretary. Thanks very much, uh, Secretary. There are eight chapters to the report. I'm going to highlight uh, the three main important areas. The first one is um, the editorial management and the uh, complaints handling. Uh, the second is performance measurement and evaluation. Third, management of um, the workforce. In terms of um, Editorial management. Um, the, there are deficiencies in the editorial management mechanism. There are no well documented editorial processes and decisions. There is no clear allocation of roles and responsibilities. 
Editorial decisions rest principally with individual production units officers based on their own judgment. The editor-in-chief and senior management have been put in a passive position in the program production process. And the upward referral and mandatory referral mechanisms for dealing with contentious and sensitive issues operate largely through verbal communications. RTHK has not put in place measures for quality assurance or compliance risk management prior to and during production or prior to broadcast. It doesn't effectively set out to explain uh, through policy documentation or guidance how principles in the Charter, the Producers' guidelines and relevant codes of practice issued by the CA should be interpreted and applied in practice so as to ensure that the programs comply with standards. RTHK has not proactively sought advice uh, from the Board of Advisors on matters pertaining to editorial principles, programming standards, and pro programming quality. For example, last year, the, um, a five minute uh, program uh, flouted uh, six. Um, requirements and there is a suspicion of in inciting hatred there is uh, no fact checking and there is no um, vetting of um, the uh, the details and whether there was some um, upward referral uh, why the editor in chief uh, couldn't fulfill his function uh, who uh, gave approval uh, for the broadcast of the program and uh, how should they deal with um, the situation if there are problems with the guidelines and the system, how can we learn uh, from the, um, the cases and who should be held responsible uh, for the, um, the problems? We haven't received any uh, response uh, from RTHC that that happened, that case happened 10 years ago. In terms of complaints handling, uh, there is a lack of um, transparency. There is no assurance that the public complaints have been uh, handled properly, objectively and impartially. RTHK would classify the complaints as whether they are related to programs and this is too broad and too loose. It fails to differentiate which ones are related to editorial principles, such as whether the programs are accurate or impartial. Once a program is uh, classified as program related, the complaint uh, would be investigated by the same officer or unit producing the program under complaint and there is a role of conf a role conflicts there investigation and follow up action are not uh, properly documented nor is there any mechanism to ensure that the referral arrangements are strictly observed reports or analysis on public complaints and handling um, are not submitted to the RTHK management, or the CEDB, or the Board of Advisors. Only complaint statistics are disclosed. It doesn't set out the public, uh, to the public details of complaints handling and the follow-up actions. We have received a lot of public complaints. We're looking at the RTHK record. Uh, all of them are unsubstantiated. Most of them are unsubstantiated. Why? Did they reach uh, such a decision that there is no documentation in this regard? It would be hard for the public to be convinced. So it is recommended uh, that RTHK should enhance editorial governance. It should put in place a robust and transparent editorial process with clearly defined editorial responsibilities and highlighting the decision-making role of the editor-in-chief and director officers. And the Editorial policies and guidelines should be made public, and there should be um, clear editorial guidelines um, and guidance or guidelines uh, for compliance by the, the uh, all the staff, and lessons should be learned from substantiated complaints. Third, um, you should establish a collaborative partnership with the Board of Advisors and seek advice from the Board on matters pertaining to editorial principles, programming standards and quality of programming. The complaints handling me mechanism should be enhanced uh, to ensure that uh, public complaints um, received are handled properly and impartially. They should keep records and enhance risk management against non-compliant cases. In terms of performance measurement and evaluation, 
Well, the key performance indicators, KPIs used by RTHK, are not linked to the public purposes and mission as set out in the Charter. It is difficult for the public and stakeholders to assess whether they have fulfilled the requirements in the Charter. The regular reports furnished only carry technical data and program information, say, for example, total hours of transmission and uh, tr hours of transmission of different types of programs. It does not offer an much information about uh, whether they have uh, fulfilled the, their public purposes, and it doesn't contain any audience feedback, so there is very low reference value. Now, analysis reports, management analysis and performance perf uh, measurement reports have not been furnished to the Board of Advisors and the Bureau. Well, they need to make use of uh, uh, audience uh, research, opinion polls to, uh, to evaluate their performance. They should also formulate more detailed annual plan and annual report. And they should also report the results and achievements to the public. In terms of management of RTHK workforce, the dedicated team thinks that uh, there is a lack of holistic departmental manpower strategy of the RTHK. They heavily rely on full-time or part-time as well as uh, NCSC staff. There are about um, five, 500 uh, uh, NCSC staff and uh, full-time staff and about 400 uh, freelancers, and there are about 1,800 providers called a Category 2 service providers around, well, involving about 3,000 service contracts. There is premature streaming into 14 work types. As a result, there is a departmental silo. There is no structured training. The main training is a half-day training um, at the time of uh, initiation when you take up the post of program officer. There is also inadequate um, posting arrangements resulting in an officer working in a single area with limited exposure. They focus mainly on short-term operational needs while ignoring long-term corporate interests and manpower development. There is a no proper succession plan in the department. The administration of some contract staff and freelancers has been given to um, different divisions. There is a lack of adequate corporate level monitoring to assess its efficiency and cost effectiveness. In relation to CAT 2 service providers, they are not RTHK staff or employees. It was back in the uh, colonial days that uh, the Finance Committee has endorsed a scheme to allow CAT2 service providers to cover five service categories, but it has now evolved into 76 different job titles. Some of these uh, duties duplicate with the program officer grade, say, for example, uh, producer as well as directors, they have engaged CAT2 service providers to take up the job. In the vetting of contracts, um, well, uh, declaration of interests as well as uh, disciplinary matters, the administration of these matters are rather loose. These contracts are directly awarded by production units without going through open procurement process without a proper gatekeeping process and there is a chance of conflict of interests. And about uh, oh, just over a year ago, there is a, a program involving a production unit. The, their person in charge awarded a CAD 2 con contract to an artist who has been suspected to have committed a serious criminal offense. The production officer at that time was well aware of this fact, and yet he awarded the contract to this person. So there is a complete lack of uh, any sense of risk management. So the dedicated teams recommends 
that the RTHK formulate a holistic departmental manpower strategy to critically review and rationalize the role and core functions of uh, the PO grade, and there should be proper training. There should also be a review of premature streaming and compartmentalized approach. And they should enhance their professionalism to foster internal synergy to meet future challenges. In relation to staff as well as CAT2 pro service providers, there should be enhancement in its management. Through guidelines as well as uh, trainings, RTHK members uh, should get a better understanding of the charter and uh, the oblig and their obligations. A code of conduct applicable to RTHK members in and out of the course of their work should be formulated. And they should properly manage conflict of interest and compliance risks. They should also need to critically review whether the CAT 2 scheme adheres to the original intention and scope as approved by the Finance Committee. As the Secretary set out at the beginning, well, um, there will be follow up action taken. I'm not going to repeat uh, these actions, and that is all for the presentation. We'll now hear from Mr. Lam. Good morning. This is a a review report of the governance and management of the RTHK is long awaited by the board of directors. We have quickly gone, uh, gone through it. It's a thick report with about 100 pages. In terms of uh, Chapter 3, management, a mechanism for editorial management and complaint uh, handling, as well as this uh, next chapter on performance management, uh, performance measurement and evaluation are close to uh, matters close to the, our hearts. We've always been very concerned with uh, the program quality as well as the um, governance and management. On a number of occasions, members of the board have discussed with the management of the RTHK to work out how to improve uh, their performance in order to better perform their roles as well as uh, to fulfill their public purposes. From this report, we see that uh, there are a lot of flaws and inadequacies in the uh, editorial management and complaint handling. Say, for example, there is, there is a no clear, well-defined and properly documented um, roles and delineation of roles and responsibilities. There is no clear guideline to make sure that uh, there will be upward referral. The RTHK will not actively seek advice from board of directors on matters pertaining to editorial principles, programming standards and quality. In relation to complaints handling, the report states that uh, there is currently no uh, very little transparency. There is no assurance that these complaints are properly handled. The complaints are investigated by the officer or unit responsible for the production of the of the pro program under complaint. And there is no full report to the board on the investigation of these complaints. It, the role of the board has been undermined. I do echo these views. The report addresses and uh, highlights highlights and addresses uh, the major inadequacies in editorial management and complaint handling. The report also says that reports furnished to the board are not properly done. The chief executive has once expressed that the RTHK should improve on matters, as say, for example, governance, training, and its and um, complaint handling mechanism. I do think that these problems are long-standing. There are a lot of problems that have to be properly rectified. Well, could these problems 
be resolved and addressed properly. Apart from determination, as the chief executive has stated, we do rely on the new director of uh, broadcasting in uh, in their in their leadership and their um, ability to implement different matters. I do expect that the new director of broadcasting will, together with his team, um, build a more active relationship with the board of advisors. I do also hope that the RTHK will take up the recommendations set out in the report and will seriously consider the, the advice and comments of the board of advisors. When we work together, I, I believe that the RTHK will be able to fulfill its dual role as a public broadcaster as well as a government department. It will be able to fulfill its public purposes and mission and in order to, in order to rebuild confidence of the public. The Board of Advisors will carefully look at these uh, review report and we will also make uh, recommendations as well. Now, throw the floor open uh, for questions. Uh, please identify yourself and restrict yourself to no more than three questions. The lady on the right in green, RTHK. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I'd like to ask about the director of um, RTHK. Um, you have identified um, the candidate. Uh, why is it that uh, Mr. Lung Wing cannot uh, serve out his uh, term the remaining six uh, months? Is it the case that uh, you don't have the right candidate, nobody is coming forward, or, or the, the, the candidates are not measuring up to your expectation, or what? The chief executive uh, said that um, she's awaiting um, the, the editor-in-chief um, to account uh, for the position. Is it the result of that? Uh, Mr. Uh, Roy Tang uh, was uh, RTHK director before. Is it um, the case that uh, by parachuting an AO um, to the position would be uh, best. The new um, director doesn't have any uh, broadcasting experience. Um, why is it that you consider that this person to be a competent person? Uh, is um, the government's view that um, um, people with broadcasting experience are not suited uh, to this post? Also, you mentioned deficiencies. I uh, used the word deficiencies um, to portray uh, the editorial management. And it is mentioned that for sensitive issues, um, there should be uh, legal advice and there should be well documented, uh, good documentation. Do you think that uh, those uh, who are involved uh, in uh, broadcasting are not uh, suitable to, to do these kind of work? And public complaints about um, editorial uh, issues. Uh, I mean, is it uh, the only yardstick? Uh, you look at the issue. Uh, will the administration merely look at um, commendations instead of complaints? Is it the case that uh, for sensitive issues, um, RTHK should not cover them? You said that uh, there is some justification for the existence of RTHK. Can you elaborate more on this? I have four questions there. Uh, the first and the third uh, have to do with the appointment of um, the director. I, I defer to um, the permanent secretary, Mr. Uh, Clement. Now, the director's contract uh, will uh, come to an end in August uh, with a mutual agreement. Uh, the contract uh, would be um, terminated a couple of months ahead of um, the uh, the end of um, the contract in accordance with um, the contractual terms. It is the government's position that we like to um, train up um, the the uh, successor uh, within the RTHK um, to take over the senior position in absence of an suitable candidate. You're probably aware that uh, for the uh, vacancy of the director, the government did mount an open recruitment. We have uh, used uh, some uh, sort of headhunters uh, to identify competent and willing candidates uh, to uh, make an application. We have received 41 applications in the process. The uh, selection committee interviewed seven in the process, we failed to identify the suitable candidate. 
So in that case, we have to consider uh, some other candidates uh, from within the, the government. The new uh, broad, um, director is an experienced uh, AO uh, with a wealth of uh, administrative experience, and he's the right candidate to, uh, to lead RTHK. For the remaining questions, this review report is, does not originate from individual cases. In 2018, in Director Audit report, um, it has highlighted some internal problems. Some of them have been followed up. Some, some others are being followed up. In the past uh, year or two, we have received a lot of complaints, and the uh, CA is, um, as a third party uh, in the uh, charter, it is um, a um, third party. Uh, Overseer, it has um, reached some conclusions, and that are uh, considered pretty serious. So, from the uh, CA's um, verdict, and also from the complaints um, against RTHK, uh, we're not talking about one single uh, program. There are suggestions about um, the editorial decision of RTHK, how we, they can make sure that the things are uh, impartial and fair, how they can fulfill the, the requirements under the Charter. All these are significant issues. So this is some um, the background uh, that, that um, we are talking about. Every time the CA uh, hands down a verdict, it would take a, a pretty long time, and the RTHK uh, would, would accept the um, the decision and uh, take the program off the air. So for these uh, serious cases uh, that are judged uh, to be non-compliant, is there any mechanism to make sure that RTHK would deal with them the issues in a way that they will not repeat uh, the same uh, blunders? And in the editorial, in the production staff team, um, do they understand uh, the requirements uh, that they have to fulfill under the Charter? So we have to look at the, the um, implementation. In, in conducting the review, uh, we involved um, the 14 uh, members, and they went into uh, RTHK and ascertained whether there is any mechanism, any, any process, uh, any um, decision-making uh, mechanism. Uh, and then they uh, they came up with um, the the uh, conclusion that there is some um, the RTHK charter uh, which spells things out, out uh, very clearly. This is nothing new. Over the years, um, they they have um, the charter, and RTHK is a public um, broadcaster. It is also a government department. It, it does um, serve um, the dual roles there, and RTHK also has uh, the producer skylines where they talk about impartiality, um, truth, and uh, observance of the highest standard, and so on. Now, with um, this charter and also the guidelines, uh, how can they make sure that they will uh, run uh, their business without um, giving rise to any uh, non-compliant cases? Now, that's why um, the review uh, uh, panel uh, considered that there are deficiencies in the um, management. You mentioned commendations. Now, of course, if um, commendations are received, then we would be really proud of that. But for a government department and public broadcaster, its um, performance uh, should not be judged on the basis of how many recommendations and how many complaints um, there are. They may uh, gauge our public opinions, of course, but when there are cases that are clearly in breach of the RTHK Charter, when they are in breach clearly of um, the producer's guidelines, when they are clearly in breach of um, the Code of Practice uh, of um, the CA, we simply cannot offset this against uh, the recommendations they received. I think we have to endorse what is right. We have to um, fix uh, what is wrong. 
And if there are deficiencies, uh, we have to, to deal with them accordingly. And that's the whole purpose of um, the re review exercise. And this is intended to make sure that RTHK uh, will observe um, the, the charter and also observe um, the professional standard that they, they set themselves. On the far right, the lady. I'm from TVB. First. I'd like to ask about uh, the current director, Mr. Lan Ka Wing. He will be leaving. Just now, it's said that uh, it is uh, mutually agreed that the contract will terminate early. Can you give us more information why there is this decision? Will he get full graduity as promised? You chose today to announce the result of the review report, and at the same time, you announce the decision uh, of Mr. Leung Ka Wing to leave. Is, uh, is there any relationship? This is a thick report, close to 100 pages. How do you briefly describe the current situation that the RTHK is under? In relation to these uh, improvements, is there a timetable set to them? What are the consequences? If for failure to do so. In relation to uh, part three of this paper, Management of RTHK Workforce, it says that a code of conduct applicable to all members in or out of the course of their work will be formulated. How is it going to be formulated? In relation to the appointment, I will defer to the permanent secretary. Well, you talk about following up of the report. This is a comprehensive report covering six areas of the RTHK. There are some burning issues that can wait, say, for example, complaint handling. There should be a set of um, criteria or standards set in every department. Transparency should be put in place. Reports should be made to the public. In relation to editorial uh, principle as well as uh, programming quality, the earlier when the follow-up actions are taken, then the chance of further complaints or f future breaches will be lower. We will ask the RTHK to lose no time to implement these recommendations. Some of the recommendations may take time to be implemented. Say, for example, currently there is heavy reliance on um, freelancers. There are also thousands of uh, service contracts. It cannot, be a, can, it cannot be changed overnight. It will take time. But as I said at the outset, the report is, is given to the management of the department. They will have to study it, look into it, work out a um, work timetable, and report to us. In relation to matters pertaining to editorial principles, programming standards, and quality, according to paragraph 13 of the Charter, they may seek advice from the Board of Directors, a Board of Advisors. As this chairman said, he's looking forward to a better working relationship with the RTHK. So this is something that can be done t in tandem by the Board and the RTHK management. In due course, we will give you information about progress. I will now defer to the permanent secretary. In terms of contract, we will follow the established procedure in terms of a civil servant appointment. We will follow the uh, terms of employment. Um, as well as remunerations as set out in our uh, usual policy. The lady in white on the left. Good afternoon. I am from the Apple Daily. I have a number of questions for the secretary. It is a meaty report. First, it talks about uh, editorial management and complaints handling. It says that currently, the person who produced the program under the complaint will investigate into the matter. 
but without the involvement of uh, people with um, profession with experience in this, is it fair? Say, for example, uh, for complaints handled by Capo, police officers handled the complaint and investigated them. They said that they are professionals and it will be professional and right for them to investigate into complaints involving themselves. So, is that double standard here? Well. Um, Without someone with experience, uh, is it a good decision? You talk about editorial independence, and you also talk about upward referral. You require upward referral for contentious and sensitive issues. Does it mean that you require the RTHK to censor themselves? You said that there should be proper record kept in terms of complaint handling. What kind of proper record? Does, does it mean that you the matter will have will be entered into the personal files of the staff member. The report also highlights about accountability as well as transparency. Just now, it is said that the, a lot of these problems have been long-standing. Say, for example, no regular report to the bureau on um, public complaints. Well, is it dereliction of duty on the part of the Bureau because the problem has been there for a long time and it hasn't been addressed? For meetings of the Board of Advisors, it's not in the public domain. We don't know when uh, there will be um, meetings convened and uh, what they're about. So far, there is no announcement of the uh, list of the dedicated team. You just say that the members have experience. Who are they? Well, you talk. You just talk about transparency. Where is it in terms of uh, the member list? You mentioned specifically about recommendations relating to complaints handling. You ask about our basis and also the membership of the dedicated team. I will give you the answer shortly. In relation to complaints handling, the view of the dedicated team is that if there is a complaint of a certain program, then the production team will be tasked to investigate into that. We're not asking for outsiders to carry out the investigation, but at least the RTHK will have to refer serious cases to um, a more senior level for them to decide whether another team is to be tasked to follow up on this matter. It is not a matter of whether it's uh, one investigating into complaints involving oneself or whether an outsider is to be involved in the investigation of these complaints. The problem we have identified in relation to complaint is not about the personal file of the staff member. It's more about the lack of a written report of uh, these complaints. Without such written report, then how do we know that an investigation has been carried out and whether the complaint is substantiated? These are basic requirements. We can't rely solely on verbal communications. If you rely solely on verbal communication, you can't effectively pass on knowledge and experience. What if a similar problem occurs in the future? Without proper documentation, then you have nothing to rely on to make sure that the same standard is applied. This is a very common problem we have identified. I'd like to also talk about the membership of the dedicated team. In a previous press release, it says that um, the person in charge of the team is a D6 administrative officer. A deputy is uh, the uh, incumbent assistant director of broadcasting who came from the RTHK working uh, their way up. 
and that person has experience in uh, radio and television. As the secretary said, there are also members with experience in administration, procurement, and corporate management. Um, let me add, in terms of complaints, now the question is um, uh, not uh, who conducts the investigations, it's a question of uh, whether they have um, the, the mechanism to deal with complaints. There are many different uh, types of complaints, uh, some are more specific, um, and they may be uh, program specific, whether the, uh, the program is um, based on facts or whether there is any distortion of facts. Others uh, may have to do with the editorial uh, stance of a particular program. So the, the question is um, how the, the complaints are classified. And there are more and more complaints um, that um, related to the editorial principles. And these are significant matters. Whatever the nature, they have to be dealt with. When the review team uh, went in, they wanted to find out how these complaints were dealt with and uh, in the process of uh, dealing with the complaints, if they're found to be unsubstantiated, what was the process? Uh, could they um, find the documented uh, details? And that was um, the conclusion reached by the uh, review team. Now you put a question regarding the um, upward uh, referral. Now other than the um, charter, they also have to produce the guidelines uh, which uh, should be abided by all staff. In the guidelines, there is a lot of coverage devoted to uh, the programming being truthful, and when there are uh, errors, uh, they should be rectified and they have to be impartial. And there is um, a an upward uh, referral system, this is not something that the review team asked them to do. Rather, in the producer's guidelines, and there is such an element. Since there is um, the upward referral and there is the path uh, pathway for, for upward referral, has RTHK uh, done this in dealing with um, the um, this situation? It has nothing. There is uh, no conflict with uh, editorial independence. The question is uh, whether they are fulfilling these requirements. So it is on, the, on this basis the review team made um, the recommendations. I'd like to uh, make another point here. You mentioned um, the responsibilities. In the uh, preamble of the producer's guidelines, it is made very clear. I respect um, RTHK here. They said that we believe that um, while fulfilling editorial independence, um, the producers have to um, fulfill uh, the editorial responsibilities. The editorial autonomy without responsibility, freedom without restraint. So this is um, two, sides of a, two sides of a two sides of a coin. They enjoy the editorial autonomy, but they have to fulfill their responsibilities as well, and these are predicated on the uh, public um, purposes in the uh, Charter. Uh, their autonomy, their freedom, are not without any restraints. And this is in accordance with the Charter and the documents that I refer to, uh, i.e. the producer's guidelines, and also uh, the code of practice um, handed down by the uh, Communications Authority. So that's why I said that in the Charter, in the producer's guidelines, it is stipulated that the editor-in-chief is the director of broadcasting, and the staff uh, at all levels should share the responsibilities there. So the management, um, the director of staff of RTHK, uh, whether they have fulfilled the responsibilities that they should fulfill. So we have made it very clear here. On well, the part of the Bureau, in accordance with um, the Charter, we do have the respons responsibility in terms of policy, in terms of administrative um, management, 
Uh, we do have the responsibility there because RTHK is um, a, a government department. So there were cases um, judged to be uh, non-compliant uh, by the uh, CA, and we have to uh, take forward the matter after receiving the, uh, the report. Let's see an English question. The lady over there, please. Questions from RTHK. So um, just to follow up on the previous question, is there any timetable or deadline for the public broadcaster to make these improvements as suggested in the report? And secondly, about the um, <coughs> editorial management. So it said that um, the DB, the editor-in-chief, or the senior management has been put in a um, passive position in the program production process. So how hands-on do you expect the DB or the senior man management to be in the daily operation when there are so many programs and um, so many um, um, programs across different channels, um, TV and also radio? And is it feasible for the new DB to do so when he lacks um, relevant experience. And um, third question is about the role, uh, the relationship between RTHK and the Board of Advisors. So how proactive should, uh, must RTHK be in seeking advice from the Board of Advisors when the two parties are already having regular meetings to discuss um, issues like editorial principles and program standards? If RTHK is expected to get advice on every major issue, so what's left with the editorial independence? Thank you. Um, can I ask the permanent secretary to answer some of the questions and I'll, I'll follow up. And perhaps later on, uh, the, the chairman of uh, Border Advisor would like to have some comments. Yeah. Um, right. First of all, the timetable. Um, today is only the first day that we released the report. Uh, I think uh, to be fair to the process, uh, we'll have to uh, let the management, the RTHK management, to, to digest the findings and to digest the report. And then, um, um, and I look forward to discussing uh, with uh, RTHK under the, under the leadership of the new director uh, to map out a pathway uh, to follow up on the uh, report. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, recommendations and observations in the report, and of course, uh, you, you cannot expect the uh, RTK to, to complete all the, all the tasks and the uh, uh, reform uh, within a short time. So there must be some sort of prioritization. And of course, uh, from the um, report, we understand that uh, the most important chapters would be uh, the chapters on uh, editorial management, and the management of public complaints, as well as uh, personnel management. So uh, we will have to give uh, the management and RTK a bit of time to work out um, how it is going to go about uh, implementing the recommendations of the report. We, we have not uh, today set any deadline. I think um, um, uh, the management and the new director will probably have to discuss with the senior management as well as its, um, uh, his staff uh, to work out a way forward. And we look forward to working closely uh, with him. Yeah, thank you. I think you mentioned about um, editorial management. Yes, that's the, core, that's, that's the crux of the matter and the core issue that the review team has identified and made recommendation on. Now, um, under the uh, Arctic Shade Charter, it has been stipulated very clearly that the director of broadcasting as the editor-in-chief is responsible for ensuring that a system of editorial control in accordance with RTHA's producer's guidelines is in place to provide accurate, impartial, and objective news, public affairs, and general programming that inform, educate, and entertain the public. So the responsibility put on the shoulder of the uh, director of broadcasting, who is also the uh, editor-in-chief, has always been in place. And it is also a responsibility that would expectedly be shared out by the senior management and whoever having an editorial responsibility. So uh, we are not saying that, well, there will be one person sort of overseeing all the program. If that's the case, that, that's uh, not a good management. Nor are we uh, condoning the practice which appear to be identified by the review team that such decisions, which are of editorial significance, might have been taken largely by people in the front line, people in relatively uh, sort of a junior position. And 
That's why the review team has given the remarks that it appears that the editor-in-chief and also the senior management seem to be in a more passive role than a role that they should have been taken up as prescribed uh, in paragraph 8 of the charter. And in fact, I think in the, in the producer's guideline, it also says the same. So we are talking about uh, editorial management in both preserving the editorial independence, which is, of course, entirely the job for RTHK and the staff led by the editor-in-chief, but at the same time, carrying out, soldering the editorial responsibility, which is also stipulated in both the charter and the guideline. Now, as to the um, role between the advisor and RTHK, I think they, they are definitely uh, having a complementary role, and because also in the Charter, paragraph 13 stipulates very clearly the role of Board of Advisors. Uh, in, in, in short, the major area that uh, would be a shared uh, sort of a responsibility between the Board of Advisors and the Department is over editorial principles, programming stat standards, and quality of our take chase programming. This is legitimately the area that, well, uh, the board of advisors is tasked to give advice uh, or to hear uh, advice and report from the department. And what the review team is recommending is uh, making full use of the role that the BOA, the board of advisor, could perform in assisting the department. So I think it's a, it's a positive step, hoping that, well, in refining and drawing up uh, a better system uh, in sort of uh, ensuring good uh, editorial management. They could also sort of uh, take advantage of the advice of the board advisor, which is uh, widely represented uh, by, by different walks of life from the community, uh, including people who might be in the industry, or also people uh, as lay persons. Thank you. Uh, the lady in the fourth row. Nadia from SCMP. So based on the answer that you have mentioned, does it mean that administrative experience outweighs journalism experience for a director of broadcaster? And also, will RTHK still, still has its own editorial independence? And uh, what about the fate of some of the RTHK programs? For instance, should any program be ended or terminated? What kind of program should RTHK produce? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think the, the first question has been answered before. Um, yes, uh, it, it has been, uh, as the Permanent Secretary has mentioned, it has been our preference to see someone with a, a broadcasting experience. And best would be someone from the department uh, through the succession arrangement. But apparently that we may not have that sort of opportunity, uh, given the uh, current sort of a, a composition of the team. And we have also failed to identify, identify a suitable candidate from the open recruitment. The arrangement to have an administrative officer uh, to put in place uh, in, as, the, as the head of uh, RTHK is to reflect uh, the need for both uh, broadcasting as well as administrative and policy uh, strength. As you can see from the uh, review report, there are, in fact, quite a lot of recommendations uh, that are of management nature, which uh, the, someone with administrative background uh, might be of help. And also, it also, I also like to reiterate that the responsibility on the editor-in-chief is not loading everything on his shoulder. As a department, as a public broadcaster, of course, the director, we need, to offer, we need to sort of work together with his directorate team and also every member of the, the department. So uh, I believe well, we, uh, we are finding the best person for the job. And hopefully, well, the new management uh, under the new leadership could also sort of work together with every member of RTHK uh, in faithfully carrying out the duties uh, which could meet the mission uh, laid out for RTHK. Now, uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, in, in the outset, and also when you read through the entire review report, 
Dow THK's editorial independence or editorial autonomy is fully respected because that's something very important uh, written down, set out clearly in the charter as well as the producer guideline. But as I have quoted just now, a statement made by our THK uh, own producer guideline, it says that there will never be editorial autonomy without responsibility, freedom without restraint. So it's part and parcel of the entire sort of uh, management uh, duty for our THK to exercise every right they have within the autonomy given to them. But at the same time, they have also need to fulfill the responsibility as laid out in their own sort of guideline and also not to mention about the charter. So I think it's two sides of the same coin. Um, I hope I answer your question. Yeah. Uh, oh, program. What about the fate of oh, some of As to the programs, I think it's entirely in the hands of uh, uh, Altec We We don't, we don't uh, 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 interfere with their programming. What we are concerned is, in fact, the quality and standard of programs, the editorial policy, and how they handle complaints. And in fact, uh, it is not a very good practice for programs which have contravened certain rules to be terminated as the only result uh, arising from a complaint. I think the department or the, the, the public broadcaster should have the ability to adjust them, themselves, to refine its program, to learn from lessons. And in fact, those are some of the recommendations made in the review report. Thank you. Uh, on the right, third row, the lady in white. I'm from Now TV. I have four questions. First, about the appointment. Just now, you mentioned that the new director has uh, both management and administration experience, but he is the director of broadcasters, but without experience in broadcasting. Do you think that it will, he's a suitable con candidate? Would it give the impression that he is an administrative officer, so he would listen, he would, um, well, toe the line of the government? And in the report, it says that there is a heavy reliance on full-time uh, or part-time NCSC and CAT2 service providers. Does it mean that there will be a major uh, cut in manpower? Would it in turn affect production or program quality? And in the full report, it says that there is a re recommendation to appoint an independent assessor. What is the criteria or the qualification of this assessor? Does it mean that every piece of news will have to go through that assessor? And it also talks about the, in the introduction of an editorial review mechanism. Are there any penalties involved? And it's also said in the report that in relation to editorial policy, uh, programming standard and, and quality, they have not sought the advice of board of advisors. Does it mean that uh, for every single thing, they will have to seek the advice of a board of advisors? When do you do it and when do you not do it? In relation to appointment, I'm not going to repeat what I've said. We cannot find someone through an internal promotion exercise. We try to find a suitable candidate in the open market, but we fail to do so. Of course, in an ideal situation, the director will have experience in all the fields required. The RTHK is not just a public broadcaster. It is also a government department and a major organization. It requires someone with management experience. We have in the past appointed an administrative officer to be the director of broadcasting. That's not something new. Please don't just focus on on this and think that the RTHK is run by one person only. The new team will render support to the new director. This is very important to the future of the RTHK. If you read the report very carefully, we have not talked anything about a cutting manpower level. We want to make better use of manpower resources. 
regarding CAT2 service providers, at the time when the scheme was approved by the Finance Committee, they require that these providers will have to be unique, say, for example, DJs or scriptwriters. But if these providers don't do what is unique of them, but instead take up duties the same as program officers, then we will have to consider whether the scheme has morphed into something else. I've given you an example about risk management. These are not your employees per se, but under the charter, contract staff and outside service providers will have to meet the uh, code, meet the standard of conduct, the same as RTHK staff members. So has this been strictly abided by? Well, we have to consider that. Fong. As to the assessors, in other parts of the world, uh, in the public broadcasters, they would uh, enlist uh, people uh, from the broadcasting circle or the journalism uh, circle to become um, the uh, assessors. They may not be involved um, in the day-to-day uh, -day editorial decisions. The whole purpose is um, to have um, assessment and, and input uh, from uh, different uh, perspectives to make sure that the programming would be in accordance with um, the, the uh, charter and the public um, purposes and mission. Uh, Mr. Lam, to answer your question, I think I have to reiterate one point, that the role of the Board of Advisors is not to uh, take part in the day-to-day -day, uh, operation and also the, the uh, production of the programming. This is not the function of the board. We do have the major role um, that under the, the charter, we are uh, there to um, give our input uh, regarding the editorial principles, um, the programming standards and the programming quality. We are offering our advice um, to the director there. We also uh, look at the, the, uh, the complaints uh, reports. I've been chairman of the, the board of advisors for six months. And I am of the view that there is a lack of transparent, uh, transparency regarding the complaints handling. Normally, the, the complaints are handled uh, by the uh, same officer or unit under complaint, and there is a role conflict there. And since I've become chairman, I've looked at um, a lot of uh, records, and I've um, liaised uh, with uh, some experienced uh, members. We've been asking RTK uh, for a lot more information about the complaints every year and how many complaints um, after investigation are substantiated or unsubstantiated and how they deal with and follow up on the complaints. From the uh, documents and from the information given to me by the, the members of the board, I cannot um, find all the relevant information and there is no channel for me to get access to the information. If RTHK cannot tell me about uh, this information, it would be hard or, if not impossible, for the Board of Advisors to offer any advice. So uh, this amounts to an erosion of um, the role of the Board of Advisors. As I said, uh, in relation to uh, tutorial principles, programming standards and quality, we're not uh, interfering with um, the day-to-day -day operation, and we are acting in accordance with the Charter in our monitoring work. Like in the Charter, uh, they have to provide programming uh, to enable the public to understand the, the nation and to uh, foster a sense of national identity and also to foster understanding of uh, the one country, two systems and implementation of such. And in accordance with um, the Charter, we have to, to act um, accordingly. Maybe I've been in the post uh, for a short time, but from my communication with uh, other members, um, there 
has been very little communication in this regard in the past. Under the um, stewardship of the new director, perhaps um, RTHK uh, will have more communication with the Board of Advisors and seek our advice. And this is uh, very much our expectation. Uh, the lady in denim jacket on the left, Hong Kong 01. Uh, this question is about the appointment of the new director. You said to, you're acting in accordance with the Charter. Under the Charter, the director is the editor-in-chief. Uh, Mr. Yao, you said uh, a moment ago that other than uh, broadcasting, um, the administrative experience uh, would be important, although he's not uh, taking up all the responsibilities. Is it in conflict with um, the Charter? He doesn't have any experience uh, in broadcasting, but he's still uh, the, the uh, editor-in-chief. I'd like uh, to put this um, question uh, to the Board of Advisors. Now, the Board uh, is not sufficiently transparent, and you issued the agenda uh, uh, very late, and we don't know what you, you, you're discussing. The former chairman also uh, said that um, there was very good cooperation with the director of broadcasting. Why is it that you said that there is an erosion of uh, the board's role? And how are you going to enhance the transparency? How do you deal with the, the complaints? Would there be any public participation and involvement of um, members of the public? In the report, it is um, mentioned that the under the Charter and the guidelines uh, that there should be uh, more comprehensive um, policies and you would um, take reference from other uh, public broadcasts. And RTHK was set up um, uh, mirroring uh, BBC, the BBC. Now, how do you take reference from other public service broadcasts? Are you taking reference from the CCTV? And also about the CAT2 uh, staff. Uh, you said that you're not trying to uh, slash the number of staff, but how do you deal with um, the CAT2 service providers if there are problems with uh, their conduct? How do you um, define um, the, the, the conduct level and how to deal with this issue? Uh, P.S. Let me take the last question first. For RTHK, Anybody who is um, appearing on um, on screen, or anybody who is um, appearing on air, uh, the the audience uh, would not care what this person is, but this person is uh, representing RTHK uh, when he's on air, and his face or his voice or his or her her face or her voice are representing the stance of RTHK. So in terms of. Uh, uh, the, um, the compliance risk uh, point of view, and also from the um, um, public uh, credibility of um, the broadcasting point of view, we have to deal with this uh, very seriously. I cited um, an example to show that there is a, a very weak uh, editorial accountability there. And I think that um, RTHK uh, should study the, the uh, report and uh, come up with a mechanism to, to make sure that there would be proper training and there would be um, compliance with um, the, the risk management and also to, to maintain the quality. Now, this is the, the most important aspect of the report. Second, it all depends on the operational needs in terms of numbers and also the actual requirements. As I said at the very beginning, we admit that as a broadcaster, uh, which uh, runs um, the, the uh, radio and television programs, RTHK does need uh, some flexibility. However, that there should be some mechanism, some guidelines uh, to observe, and they have to do a proper job in terms of um, complaint handling. You mentioned um, the appointment. We would like to identify the most suitable candidate. In the light of past experience, uh, people with um, different experiences um, were 
appointed uh, as um, the director of broadcasting. Would someone with uh, broadcasting experience uh, be able to sail through? Um, and for those without broadcasting experience, uh, we're not be able to fulfill the, the principles under the charter. This may not necessarily be the case. So we do have expectation on RTHG, whoever the director is. Uh, this is not a single person's work. The director is the editor-in-chief and a leader. He will lead the 700-strong team of RTHK members and over 2,000 freelancers or contract staff. So I'm sure that the director will do his job properly. You talk about a comparison with other public service broadcasters. Public service broadcasters is not something unique to Hong Kong. In Appendix 3.4, the review team has set out three similar broadcasters, one in the UK, one in Canada, and the other one in Australia. In terms of editorial management, complaints handling, and how they make sure that uh, the charter or something similar they have is abided by. They have similar approach. So there, there are areas that is of reference value. I'll answer your question. I cannot comment on the relationship between the previous chairman and Mr. Leung Ka Wing. Since I've taken up this post, I have spoken to other members who are rather senior. We've had a number of meetings. Our view is that there is room for improvement in our cooperation. We need to enhance our re relationship to make it more, to make it work better. So I do look forward to the new director and their team to um, well to build a better relationship with us but what about the disclosure of meeting agenda and date rather late I am aware of these criticism I heard that minutes of meeting are uploaded rather late onto the internet and um, meetings schedules are information are sent out um, to the media rather late and we will do something about it we'll answer questions from two more reporters the lady in brown i'm from cable tv just now, there was a mention about engagement of a dedicated independent assessment to look into complaints or other matters. Just now, someone asked about the, the criteria for such appointment. You also said that the engagement of CAT to service providers has somewhat deviated from the original scheme. What are you going to do with with them? Will would uh, the existing contracts be replaced with different ones? You also mentioned that uh, some CAT two service providers are hired by pr the, the production team, and there is a risk of conflict of interest. In the future, who will be responsible for hiring these uh, providers? You also talk about. Uh, risk management, there, there should be upward referral and there should be an assessment conducted. But there are different stakeholders involved. How are you going to uh, go about with it? In relation to the new director, he has no experience in broadcasting. Would that be a risk? Will he 
interfere with uh, editorial uh, autonomy or independence of the RTHK? In relation to the last part of your question, well, we ask for mechanism to be set up. We can't require all uh, matters or production or uh, or, or different uh, items to go through the director. We want to see an upward referral in place so that various risks can be reported. Say, for example, in the seven substantiated complaints, what types of, of program are they? You will be able to see the information in the public domain. You'll be able to see where the risks are. Say, for example, comments that incite hatred, uh, inflammatory comments, uh, insulting comments, uh, the lack of a fact check, failure to um, verify information. Before the program is aired, and the more contentious and sensitive the matter is, then, then you have to handle it more carefully, and you may have to refer it upwards. This is not something new. We have strong reference from other uh, public service broadcasters. They enjoy editorial independence, but they have some. Uh, they have um, a mechanism in place. We don't think there is a big problem for the RTHK to adopt a similar approach. We do not see any possibility of uh, the adoption of such a mechanism. Um, and the fact that it will impede its fulfillment of duties under the Charter. In relation to CAT 2 service providers, well, we have to make sure that a better decision is made in it in the administration of CAT 2 service providers. These, some of these service providers are directly engaged by the production team without giving justification. And there is no post-production assessment of performance or quality. These things could be could have been done, and this is an area that can easily be improved. We have to have further discussions with the RTHK. It's not a one-sided decision that we impose this decision onto them. We will talk to them. It's a two-way dialogue. You're all very concerned about editorial independence. I'm sure that you will not disagree that with, indi with auditorial independence, there comes responsibilities. These responsibilities are not added on um, as something new. They have been set out in the Charter and the producer's guidelines. Well, the CA mentioned in relation to a substantiated complaint resulting in a serious warning that uh, they that there are certain breaches in uh, the code or practice of the CA. They are, these are mainly to do with chapters three and nine. Say, for example, to make sure that all the facts are true and accurate. Uh, is it even-handed? Um, has have they relied on false information to make the report? There are similar clauses in the RTHK's producer's guidelines. In one of the rulings of the uh, Communications Authority, they have asked for a reply from the RTHK. The RTHK said that, well, that, be, that is because of a lack of time. The CA in the uh, rulings has said that um, with a limited 
time available, the RTHK has done their best to abide by the charter, but they have not explained why. That uh, it is more important to meet the time, uh, the time limit they impose on themselves than fact-checking. There is an upward referral mechanism in place, but if it is not used, it is useless. Where there is uncertainty or um, where there is uncertainty, there should be an upward referral for the management to make the decision. If that is not done, and as a result, a complaint, that there is a complaint, and in the case that I've cited, the CA found that the com found the complaint to be substantiated, and they have issued a strong, they have issued a serious warning. They say that the RTHK should attach a lot uh, importance to fact checking. And that itself is a principle that should be admitted by the RTHK. And that's why I said that auditorial importance cannot be separated from their responsibilities. How long? The lady on the right, at the back, please. Stan News. Also about the appointment of the director, it was mentioned that the existing director and the editor-in-chief editor uh, may be uh, deficient and he may not be sharing um, things with um, the Board of Advisors and in accordance with the Charter. And it is also said that um, the um, new director uh, has some administrative uh, strength. Uh, does it mean that the existing director doesn't have um, this kind of strength. Now, this director, ACC director, has um, six months uh, to go on his contract. Why don't you wait out the, the contract? Also, a uh, cat to um, the, the uh, hiring of um, artists. Um, there is um, an element of uh, criminal uh, liability. Who, who are you talking about and, and what programming uh, w were you referring to? Also, uh, the criteria for uh, hiring the, the next um, director. Uh, the the the, um, the the use of um, the uh, ex independent um, uh, assessor and and the um, how to identify um, the the right candidate. P.S. I, I spare you all the minute details. Uh, I think I have uh, answered um, the appointment twice. The government is uh, the employer and the director is the employee. And. It is through a mutual consent that um, the contractor would be terminated um, prematurely. I'm not with you regarding the last uh, question. I, I don't think I get to your question there. About fact-checking, many uh, PSB uh, many PSBs do have uh, very detailed um, guidelines. It's not hard to find if you uh, go on, web, uh, on the web. So the speaker not coming through. Speaker not coming through. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't get your question. Perhaps um, with the mask on, uh, you didn't come through uh, clear in, clearly enough. The review team um, noticed that um, there are other public broadcasters and they're using this mechanism. And these uh, people are not involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, operation of um, the, the broadcaster. But there would be an added layer for the outside people to uh, validate the programming um, to make sure that the, the programming would be impartial and there would be some um, peers uh, with broadcasting experience uh, who would be offering input um, to, to make sure 
that um, the day-to-day -day operation will be impartial and fair and also accomplish um, the public uh, purposes and mission. As to the um, detailed um, operation, as I said earlier on, we have to uh, discuss uh, with RTHK. And I hope that um, RTHK would approach this uh, with an open mind and share with us um, their, their views. In the report, uh, we have uh, looked at um, three uh, public service broadcasters. RTHK is uh, a member of the Asian Broadcasting Union, and it does have a lot of uh, connections there with um, the outside um, broadcasters. And they can also um, make reference to other PSBs uh, from around the world. And if uh, there is any um, examples uh, that can, can um, be of good reference value, they, they can certainly get hold of um, these kind of experience um, to see uh, whether these um, experience uh, can be applicable to, to RTHK. That's it uh, for today. Thank you all very much.